A major method used in the refining industry is called cracking. The name refers to the breaking up of large hydrocarbons into smaller ones so that they can go through further processes to produce petroleum products. And this is achieved either using high pressures and temperatures without a catalyst, known as thermal cracking, or with lower temperatures and lower pressures with the presence of a catalyst, known as catalytic cracking. In this case, the catalyst speeds up the rate of reaction and breaks up the hydrocarbons faster. The source of hi large hydrocarbons is often found in the naphtha fraction of the oil-gas fraction from fractional distillation, as you saw in the previous video. In catalytic cracking, the hydrocarbons are mixed with a very fine catalytic powder called zeolites, as shown on the right-hand side. These new catalysts used nowadays are more efficient than the old mixtures of aluminum oxide and silicon dioxide. The whole mixture is then blown like a liquid through a reaction chamber at a temperature of around 500 degrees Celsius. And now since this mixture behaves like a liquid, this process is also known as a fluid catalytic cracking. Even though the mixture of the gas and the fine solid behaves as a liquid, this is nevertheless an example of a heterogeneous catalyst since the catalyst is in a different phase than the reactants. After the reaction, the catalyst is recovered and the cracked mixture is separated by cooling and will go through further fractional distillation. In this process, there isn't any single unique reaction that happens in a cracker. In other words, the hydrocarbon molecules are broken up in a fairly random fashion to produce mixtures of smaller hydrocarbons. On the right hand side we have two examples. C20H42 is mixed with a catalyst aluminum oxide and silicon dioxide, which is the old fashioned catalyst. And C15H32 is mixed with a zeolite catalyst. Another process used in the refining process to break down large hydrocarbons is called hydrocracking. This in involves a combination of catalytic cracking and hydrogenation. Typically, this is used for heavier feedstock that is hard to process with different methods, and these feedstocks often contain a high aromatic content or they contain the elements sulfur and nitrogen. These could be cracked with temperatures around 260 to 425 degrees Celsius at high pressures. This method could be used to produce gasoline and jet fuels from heavy oil fuels. The catalyst used in hydrocracking can vary, but typically they involve the use of hydrogenation catalysts such as nickel and palladium. Hydrogenation refers to the adding of hydrogen as a, with a catalyst under high pressures as we learned. The whole process of hydrocarbon could be summarized into three steps. The first step involves the cracking of high boiling, high molecular weight hydrocarbons into low boiling molecular weight hydrocarbons, which can be used to produce these petrol fuels. The second step involves the hydrogenation of unsaturated hydrocarbons into saturated hydrocarbons, which can later be used to produce other things. And the third step, of course, involves the hydrogenation of sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen into gaseous hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, and H2O. One of the major applications of petroleum is the burning of its fuels. When fuels burn, the bonds and molecules are broken to release energy. If the energy released is more than the energy required to form the products, we say this reaction is exothermic. Petroleum fuels, when they react, they always form exothermic reactions. For example, on the right, we have methane reacting with O2 to produce some CO2, H2O, and some heat. As you can see, the enthalpy is negative 810 kilojoules. The amount of energy released of these hydrocarbons depends on the oxidation state of carbon. If the oxidation state is lower, in other words, there is a greater hydrogen to carbon ratio, then more energy will be released. Along with the previously mentioned factors, the fraction of aromatic molecules in the fuel could also decrease the energy release. For example, crude oil and gasoline compositions are relatively pure with lower concentrations of aromatic molecules. 
for the energy release value is higher, while various coals, such as hard and soft bituminous, contains a higher concentration of aromatics, therefore their energy release is lower. Okay, here is the combustion of air kings, air kings and the combustion of hydrocarbons are all, are all redox reaction, which contain both oxidation and reduction reactions. Here are two examples indicating such type of reaction. The first example is burning propane, which is um, C3H8. Theoretically speaking, the products of uh, for all combustion of hydrocarbons are carbon dioxide and water. The only difference among them is the coefficient that appears in front of reactants and products. There are two major methods used to balance redox reaction in chapter 5. One is using oxidation number and the other is using half reaction method. In order to balance propane reaction, we can use half reaction method. To begin with, the full equation is broken down into two half reactions. Then all the elements except for oxy oxygen and hydrogen need to be balanced by adding appropriate coefficients. After that, the remaining oxygen and hydrogen atoms are going to be balanced by adding water and hydrogen ions. When all the elements are balanced, electrons are added to make sure that the charge on both sides of two equations is equivalent. For instance, in the second half equation, there are four hydrogen ions on the left side, therefore, four more electrons have to be added. The last step is to make sure that um, electrons gain and loss between these two equations equal to each other. Twelve electrons are released in the first half reaction while another four electrons are gained in the second half reaction. In this sense, the second half reaction needs to be multiplied by five. Finally, put these two half reactions back into one complete equation in which one propane molecule reacts with five oxygen molecules to produce three carbon dioxide molecules and four water molecules. For combustion of ethene, we are going to use oxidation number, oxidation method to balance this equation. At the very beginning, we need to assign each element by its oxidation number. After this step, it clearly indicates that the oxidation number for both carbon and oxygen changes. Temporary coefficient needs to be added before moving on to the next step. What is temporary coefficient? We can take a look at C2H4 and carbon dioxide. There are two carbon items in C2H4. Thus, coefficient 2 has to be added before carbon dioxide so that number of carbons should be equal to each other. Repeat the same step for oxygen and water molecules since another temporary coefficient needs to be added in front of water molecules as well. When all these steps are settled down, we should compare number of electrons gain and lost so that we can see if it is necessary to multiply by a certain number to balance the number of electrons. There are, two, there are 12 electrons lost from C2H4 to, um, to carbon dioxide while only 4 electrons gain from oxygen to water. In this way, 4 have to be multiplied by 3 to lose 12 electrons. The last step is to balance hydrogen atoms in order to achieve a balanced equation. Here is the characterization and treatment of sludge from petroleum industry. One of the byproducts that is produced in the petroleum industry is wastewater, which is also called sludge. It is critical to collect samples of sludge from the petroleum industry because of their pollution characteristics. There are various sorts of measurements to evaluate whether such sludge will impose a hazardous influence on local ecosystems and residents living in that area. pH value is one example. Here are two diagrams dem demonstrating the disposal process of sludge. In figure 1, a large amount of fresh sludge comes into the tank. Any precipitates of sludge settle down at the bottom of this tank. After the sedimentation of partial amount of sludge, the dissolved part is transferred into another tank shown in figure 2. The stirrer in this tank helps to, di helps to dissolve uh, sludge in order to create two layers. One is supernatant and the other is 
digestive starch. Such digestive starch is relatively relatively safe and will not cause serious environmental issues, as fresh starch does. Nevertheless, not every country in this world can afford such expensive petroleum treatments. In some developing countries, the p the equipment used for such treatments are very poor and less advanced. According to a survey, the pH value for fresh uh, petroleum starch is around 5.48. This indicates that fresh petroleum starch is acidic, which is toxic to fish and other aquatic life. Okay. Now let's take a look at the so uh, hydrocarbon solubility. The petroleum products consist of a variety of hydrocarbons. The principle that is used to determine the solubility of these different kinds of hydrocarbons is like dissolves like. More specifically, Polar solvent dissolves polar compounds. Non-polar solvent dissolves non-polar compounds. The electronegativity difference indicates that hydrocarbons are all polar compounds. On account of that, hydrocarbons can dissolve into the water. Additionally, another way to evaluate the solubility of hydrocarbons depends on whether the solution is homogeneous or heterogeneous. If the solution is homogeneous, hydrocarbons are soluble. The reason is that such solution has no evident layers, indicating that hydrocarbons are miscible. However, if the solution is heterogeneous, then hydrocarbons being tested are all insoluble. In other words, such, uh, since such solution has evident layers, hydrocarbons are all immiscible. Generally speaking, the solubility of hydrocarbons is relatively very low in seawater. In this solubility diagram, it illustrates that among all kinds of hydrocarbons, Benzene has the highest solubility, which is at 1,750 mg per liter, with toluene at 515 mg per liter, and xylene, which is less than 100 mg per liter. Apart from benzene, monoaromatics have the highest solubility than similar with alkanes. In conclusion, hydrocarbons pose a very serious problem to aquatic lives. Oil leak happened in the Gulf of Mexico last year, triggered many environmental issues to the local ecosystems. Hence, it is very significant for each, ver each country to prevent petroleum from linking into seawater. So this concludes our presentation, and we hope you enjoyed it.